This is a presentation on seroseparation, neonatal couplet care, and immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact for very preterm infants. I am Stina Clemming. I'm a consultant in neonatology and a NEDCAP trainer. NEDCAP stands for Newborn Individualized Developmental Care and Assessment Program. I've done this presentation together with my colleague, Björn Westrup, Senior Consultant in Neonatology, a NEDCAP professional and researcher at Karolinska University Hospital and the Karolinska Institute. We have no financial disclosures. We have consent from all parents for pictures and films in this presentation. Objectives, to understand the concept of serious separation and coupled care and understand safety issues for infants and mothers. For skin-to-skin -skin contact immediately after birth for preterm infants, being able to plan and organize stabilization and or pre transport of a pre very preterm, moderately preterm pre or term infant in a skin-to-skin -skin position with a parent. Can we present the biologically expected experiences also for sick or preterm infants? Immediate mother-infant skin-to-skin, suckling and getting breast milk by mouth. Connection, bonding and attachment, warmth, sens sensory stimulation, nutrition, microbiome maturation, immune competence, adaptation and stabilization of physiological systems. This is Amelia. She's 13 minutes old and she has initiated many of these issues. This is Benjamin. Benjamin was born vaginally in week 32 plus one day. It took him four weeks to manage these um, obstacles. What experiences and what support did he need and how can we facilitate this? Infant and Family Centre Developmental Care, IFCDC, is a concept where we discuss these issues, the early and immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact, the, the continuous skin-to-skin -skin contact, and the serious separation between infants and their mothers, newborn infants. IFCDC is founded on the leading edge work of Barry Bresselton and Heidi Zals the Convention of the Rights of the Child, the Declaration and the, on, of uh, Infants' Rights from World Association of Infant Mental Health, and the concepts of newer behavior, newer development, parent-infant interaction, parental involvement, breastfeeding promotion, environmental adaptation and systems adaptation. IFCDC is a change of mindset. It needs a change of mindset. It needs system change and it needs education and training to be implemented. IFC, uh, IFC, uh, EFCNI, the European Foundation for the Care of Newborn Infants, have um, stated the European standards for care, uh, of care for newborn health in 11 different areas of care. And infant and family centered developmental care is one of these areas. And here we have 10 standards for the care of newborn health. Serious separation and very early and continuous skin to skin contact are two of these bullet points. To be able to fulfill these, all these things, we need to understand that change has to be implemented through, through different systems. The infant, the parent, the family system, the NICU system, the hospital system, and the community system. These systems affect each other in a synactive and dynamic and ever-changing ever way. We know that we in Sweden are very fortunate in many of those systems. We have parents present um, from the delivery of the child and throughout the NICU stay. And we already have many of those uh, changes uh, done, but still we have 
actually a long way to go to um, being able to fulfill all these different standards at a gold standard level. Um, I often show this picture to remind us who we work for. This premature and sick infant has been resuscitated and then brought back to the mother for a very important moment. We see the parents having eyes only for their infant and we know that we have done a good job since the whole picture looks like this. This is Carl. He was born vaginally in week 31, 1522 grams. He was put immediately skin to skin with his mother and got nasal CPAP. A peripheral line was inserted and at the age of 30 minutes, he was put to the incubator and transported to the NICU. And this is another way of keeping the family together to have the incubator still in the delivery room and to stay there. So we continue to do newborn care okay, in the delivery room. NICU staff in the delivery room, we connect equipment to gases in the wall. We have nosogastric tube. We start the enteral feeding. IV line is put and IV fluid, fluid is if needed and we keep the infant warm. These are important moments of love. And of course, this family perspective with minimized separation also needs to be there for term infants who were sudden, unexpectedly, um, who unexpectedly needed uh, neonatal or newborn care. This girl was born term with an APGAR score of 0, 047 after a shoulder dystocia. She was intubated um, at one minute and successfully extubated again at 30 minutes after stabilization. She was then taken into the delivery room uh, using this incubator that you see in the background and put skin to skin with her mother for 15 minutes before she was taken to the NICU uh, for thorough observation for asphyxia. She never needed uh, any more uh, extensive treatment. And after some days, she was um, discharged for home. And the parents were very uh, happy about these 15 minutes of skin to skin after the resuscitation. They actually didn't even remember that first half, uh, half an hour. I would here like to mention a safety issue. Uh, I am very reluctant to transport infant with the muscular hypertonia and affected neurology in a skin to skin position because the airway might be compromised if position is not 100% correct. When the baby is then taken to the NICU um, skin to skin contact will be reevaluated and done um, with a careful observation. Neonatal caplet care is a concept of care with the diet of the ill or prematurely born infant and the mother needing medical care of her own are cared for together from the birth of the baby to its discharge coupling the care of the baby with the care of the mother. Mothers can be transferred to the NICU only a few hours after get, uh, giving birth. After vaginal delivery, usually in Karolinska, that is two hours. Sometimes uh, they can um, do an exception and the mother can come along even earlier. Or we stay in the delivery room until these two hours have passed and we can transfer the whole family to the NICU if needed. The organization for neonatal couplet care can be arranged in different ways. And in Stockholm, we have tried um, mainly two different ways. So the current 
situation we have, the system we use is uh, where a neonatal nurse care for the infant and midwives from the obstet obstetric department care for the mother. For a period of 10 years, we successfully managed to uh, have an organization where the care of the infant and the mother was done in the same organization with midwives employed in the NICU. Requirements for implementation of couplet care would be to have large family rooms with hospital beds, emergency equipment for mothers, midwives always available, available on a phone, uh, at least on a phone, or, uh, and also um, preferably in, a, in an alarm, um, emergency alarm system. Um, we need education for nurses and doctors in the NICU for safe care of the mothers since the mothers are physically in the NICU. And we need an architecture for accessibility. This mother with insulin dependent diabetes and preeclampsia was cared for in the NICU only a few hours after delivery. The infant is born late preterm with a cesarean section and the mother has an IV line with an infusion going. There are many challenges with couplet care, neonatal couplet care. You have to be very thorough uh, planning your organization. You have to be, you have to, you need a very, um, a good communication between the different units, communication and cooperation, and you need to solve different logistic uh, challenges. Most mothers are eligible for couplet care, but exceptions could be eclampsia or severe preeclampsia, large bleeding or hemodynamic instability, other reasons for care in the ICU for the mother, contagious disease and severe psychiatric illness. We have some published and some unpublished evaluations of couplet care. We have seen early breast milk productions in, with the mothers. Uh, we have seen higher incidence of breastfeeding, less reported pain for mothers, lower blood pressure for preeclamptic mothers, Easier situation for fathers, of course, not having to divide himself between the uh, between the, the baby and the mother. Lower stress and, and anxiety in mothers, shorter length of stay at hospital for the infant. And that was significant for the younger gestational ages and for the period in the intensive care unit compared to the special care unit or um, special care nursery, nursery or, or um, level two NICU. Uh, parents are more active in the care of their children was one observation that the midwives and the NICU staff um, could see. And it was easier for staff to see parents as the most important persons in the baby's life from the very start. At Dandryd NICU at Karolinska, we, uh, we have measured, we do measure the skin to skin time all the time and in um, for every baby. Uh, during periods of um, measuring for a study, we, uh, we always have a more accurate uh, number. And during the last measure, uh, like this in a study that was the SCENE study, the European Collaboration of Research. And you see the, the reference down there in Acta Pediatrica. We had a mean time of skin to skin uh, contact of eight and a half hours a day. Karolinska uh, neonatal department is divided into three quite small uh, NICUs. So one level two NICU at Dandryd Hospital with 11,000 deliveries per year. 
and 15 to 18 beds. We have Hudinge with 7,500 deliveries per year. It's a level three NICU with 16 to 18 beds. And we have Solna level four NICU with 3,500 deliveries per year and 12 to 16 beds. At Karolinska, we did uh, a study on immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact. It was a pilot study for feasibility. Uh, and mainly the first uh, outcome was to, to look at thermal, thermal control. But as I said, it was mainly a feasibility study to see how we would practically um, care for babies in immediate skin to skin. And this was um, published in Acta Pediatrica. We, uh, we then moved forward and we were part of a very large study called the IKMC study or immediate KMC. That study was stopped in advance because of benefit. It was, it included uh, 3,700 infants in Malawi, Tanzania, Nigeria, Ghana, and India. It was babies weighing 1,000 to 1,800 grams. And the outcome was improved survival and reduced mobility, the, the main outcome. Uh, as part of this study, we did a similar study called Epistos, Immediate Parent-Infant Skin-to-Skin uh, Contact, uh, a skin-to-skin -skin study in Sweden and Norway. And we are actually still including infants in this study. And you see our trial registration number uh, below if you want to have a more thorough look into our um, research um, the, um, yeah, the protocol. And the presentation uh, that follows is um, part of, or it, it's sort of a workshop for this, uh, the, how we practically go about to uh, put preterm, in, very preterm infants uh, immediately skin to skin after birth. And first, a very short, uh, a brief presentation of uh, what conventional care looks like in our setting. We have incubators with a transport shuttle. We have CPAPs with humidifier. So we prepare a warm place, often an open incubator with all materials prepared. We have a Neopuff a nasal CPAP, electrodes for EHD, and saturation monitor sensor. We weigh all fabrics in advance, the blankets, bed nests, CPAP cap, diaper, etc. We prepare for endotracheal tubes, nasogastric tubes, IV lines, and drugs. If the baby is expected to weigh less than 1,000 grams, we use a plastic wrap. We use nasal CPAP directly if possible, if the baby is not in need of more advanced um, ventilatory support. Quite often we put an IV line, a peripheral line uh, in an early stage. We unite the family as soon as possible. And here a mother who had a cesarean section. And before she goes to the recovery room, uh, the infant and the mother meet each other. So for immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact with the parent. And if we start with cesarean section scenario, because 50 to 70% of deliveries before 32 gestational weeks in Sweden are C-sections compared to 17% for term deliveries. 
In the study, of course, we had an informed consent for parents and staff. And we prepared the father with a baby carrier. And you will see pictures of this later on in the presentation. And this is needed before the father or the partner is entering the operating room, since um, there are special hygiene precautions in that room. We bring equipment and prepare as soon as we know about this delivery. It is very important to have clean equipment going into an operating room. We try to have, a, we should try to have a room temperature between 25 and 28 degrees Celsius. And this is a WHO recommendation. We have our equipment prepared with an APCA clock, preheated humidifier for the CPAP, a monitor, and there are monitors uh, with assessments of temperature, and that can be as a continuous measurement of temperature rectally or with the skin probe. Uh, the nasal CPAP and extra long CPAP tubings, the Neopuff and a suction device. And we have all this equipment on a mobile equipment on wheels that we call the NICU bridge or the NICU. Or you can have it as a shuttle and a wheelchair. And here you see the whole Christmas tree of equipment. In the preparation room in the operating room. Uh, this is like a pre room to the operating room. We prepare the resuscitation table or an open incubator uh, as usual to be able to move the baby there if needed. We put the heater on maximum to heat the room up. The caregiver here, the aunt, often the father or a partner, is informed and confident. And she's here dressed with the baby carrier under the surgical, surgical gown. And a soft blanket for the caregiver's back can be nice. We have long cables and CPAP tubings. There are tubings uh, of 10 feet or three meters to reach both the skin to skin place and the table. A well-prepared NICU team with an experienced neonatologist and an informed obstetrical team is very important. We have our usual setup with the endotracheal tube, the nasogastric tube, the drugs and the peripheral line. We connect the CPAP to the gas supply from the wall and we exchange if, if it is a small baby uh, that is expected, we usually exchange the resuscitation table for an incubator. It is a good, if, if, if it's not used for the baby, at least it is a good place to keep fabrics warm. Preparation for stabilization follows with a normal procedure of local routines. Nasal CPAP monitor vital, uh, to monitor vital par parameters, to have uh, to be able to do positive pressure ventilation if needed, and to have temperature control and monitoring. The place is different, but the care is the same. According to ordinary routines, late cord clamping at least one minute if the infant is vital, and this is. Uh, this is decided by the midwife and the obstetrician doing the cesarean section. Uh, plastic wrap if expected birth weight below 1000 gram. The midwife brings the infant to the pediatric team. She does a quick ass assessment that she sees no major anomalies or report and report anything, of course, to the neonatologist in charge. The midwife is informed to put the infant in a prone position high up on the father's chest. And the midwife report vital, reports vital signs. And here you see that the father is 
informed and prepared well in advance. So we put the baby in a prone tucked position, we cover the baby and we put a nasal CPAP. This baby is born in week 28 plus two. Uh, he has good vital parameters. The cord was cut after 30 to 45 seconds and the nasal CPAP was on his nose at 66 seconds of age. The place is different, but the care is the same. You see him here, one and a half minute, minutes old and hundreds, 100 seconds old. He's then, he, he then has his electrodes for the EKG uh, on his back as a, uh, as a shape of uh, a large V, a V shape. He is then covered with a merino wool blanket um, since wool keeps you warm even if uh, you are humid, um, a bit damp, wet. So we put a sensor for pulse oximetry on the right hand as usual. The neonatologist holds the nasal CPAP and assess good breathing movements with the other hand. The person giving skin to skin contact, here the aunt, is asked about if she feels the boy breathing, and she does. An elastic band is put on the cord instead of the hemo hemostatic forceps. Vitamin K injection is given, and a quick assessment of genitals and anus is done. And we measure for the nasogastric tube. And this is done very quickly and swift. The baby is well covered with the wool blanket and a warm towel or another blanket is put around um, the baby. We try to keep, keep warm fabrics um, around. We put a cap on and attach the CPAP uh, to the cap. And the wool plank blanket is then put also uh, put up on the head, also covering the cap. So the wool blanket is covering the whole infant and it is put smooth without folds. And then the baby carrier that the, this aunt had already before um, uh, around her is put up over the infant and of course around the aunt the skin-to-skin the -skin giver. And then we put a special insulating thermal blanket in flectalone, it's a special material, uh, over the wool blanket and the baby carrier. And this blanket is preheated. The baby is here eight minutes old, has a regular breathing, a nice color and good vital signs. The nasogastric tube is put in place and we start feeding. A peripheral line is put and sometimes we get a blood glucose test uh, to evaluate if we need a glucose infusion. A safe and secure place in skin-to-skin -skin contact is high up on the caregiver's chest. So we have a nasal CPAP with cap, we have electrodes and pulse oximetry monitoring, we have a temperature monitoring, we have a, na a nasogastric tube, a peripheral line, we have the wool blanket, the baby carrier, the special um, thermal blanket of flectalone, and a warm towel on top of that. And then we have a blanket for the adult, the father, to keep him warm and heat him up a little bit extra for him to be able to keep his, his baby warm. We need to keep some parts of the baby visible for assessment, the face and the mouth, the hand, at least one hand and the fingers. The baby should be in a sniffing position on a kissing distance high up on the parent's chest, sternum to sternum. And in this position, it might be time to meet mom. This is Liv. 
She was born in gestational age 28 plus four days, and she was weighing only 965 grams. And here she is 15 minutes old, meeting her mother in the, who is still in the operating room. The mother has a severe preeclampsia, uh, almost going into eclampsia, and she needed uh, care in the ICU for the first 24 hours after delivery. So for vaginal delivery, it is more challenging. It needs more communication and collaboration with the obstetrical team or between the obstetrical team and the NICU team. It is very important that we do not disturb and interfere with the delivery process. We need this close collaboration with the midwife and the obstetrician and mother safety always comes first. We need to have an informed consent from parents and staff since this was done in a study. We need the baby carrier on a father partner. The mother has to be prepared also for skin to skin contact. So primarily the mother, but we also prepare the father or partner. Um, we need, there, there might be a need for extra connections for gas supply from the wall, since the mother has her, might need her gases or need the gases for her, uh, for her anesthesia, yeah, for the gases, you know, for anesthesia. Uh, the equipment has to be prepared and put in place well in advance, and then we leave the room. We re-enter the room on a signal from the midwife, timely with parturition. We have warm fabrics, and we have we are uh, everything is in peace and quiet, not to disturb the delivery. So here we see our mobile equipment, well prepared team, and we plan every step. The father has a baby carrier and maybe a cap like his little baby. Uh, we enter the room in the last minute of parturition and then we bring our warm fabrics. This was Benjamin again, and he was born in week 32 plus one day vaginally. He was put immediately skin to skin with his mother and he was in continuous skin to skin with his mother for the first seven hours. He was not taken from his mother's skin or chest during the first seven hours. And after that, he was in skin to skin position with his father. So here we see him at 25 minutes, 60 minutes and seven hours still with his mother. He got a nasal CPAP, a warm wool blanket, a sensor, and electrodes, monitoring pokes, and after 25 to 30 minutes, an gastric tube was, was put in place, still on his mother. The first meal of seven milliliters of milk was given. His mother expressed a small amount of colostrum, which Benjamin got in his mouth. And in two hours, a peripheral line was put and a glucose infusion started. Benjamin was transferred to the NICU, still in skin-to-skin -skin contact with his mom. This was a little boy born in Stavanger, Norway, where we have, um, where we also include babies for this study. Twins, very challenging and extra rewarding. Many people can be really crowded. So we need to be even more prepared and even more careful about not interrupting and interfering with, with anything uh, during the, the delivery. Uh, we need extra equipment, two of everything. A delicate procedure when, when vaginal delivery of twins. 
So we really need to take precautions not to disturb the obstetrical team. Twin one was immediately put skin to skin with the father after the cord was cut. And the neonatal team number one cares for twin one with nasal CPAP monitoring, peripheral lines and NG tube. Twin two states, stayed in, immediately, in immediate skin to skin contact with the mother. Neonatal team two cares for twin, twin two with nasal CPAP monitoring, peripheral lines and NG tube. And these twin boys were born in week uh, 31 and five days. And there's a lot of equipment in the delivery room. Forty-five minutes after delivery, the mother started to express milk, and she expressed during thirty minutes. Uh, and she had a lot of milk, so she got ten milliliters of colostrum for each of her babies. Um, that that was given orally and in the NG tube because it was so much. After two hours, the father got both of his little twin, uh, his little sons, put on his chest, prepared to for the transfer to the, the neonatal department, the NICU. The unexpected has to be expected. There are infants in need of more. This was a C-section in gestational age 30 and one day, and the girl was weighing 988 grams. She was put immediate skin to skin with the father. She had insufficient breathing and a low tone. We uh, tried to help her with careful stimulation and we put the, uh, the Neopuff. Um, we, we brought, brought uh, the Neopuff uh, to start positive pressure ventilation still in the skin to skin contact place with the father. But she was then, uh, that didn't help or she deteriorated before we even started. And she was moved to res resuscitation table um, or it's actually an open incubator as you see for further stabilization with positive pressure ventilation with the Neopuff. We prepared for intubation, but that was never needed. This is the born in week 29. And as you see, he's not very vigorous when he's born. Um, so we brought about the nasal CPAP He has a low tone. He is trying to breathe and trying to scream a little bit, but he was flaccid and became bradycardic. Um, he got a few puffs with the Neopuff in the skin to skin, in the skin to skin position. Uh, the cord was intact, but as we later uh, found out, the placenta had already, um, was already delivered because it was a ablatio of the placenta. At one minute and 34 seconds, the boy was brought to the resuscitation table. He got positive pressure ventilation with a neopuff and intubation with surfactant delivery. He responded very well to this and at 20 minutes of age, he was extubated to nasal CPAP.
He was then brought to a skin-to-skin -skin position with his father in a secure place, in the secure um, position with the baby carrier, the wool blanket, and the thermal blanket. And at 30 minutes of age, uh, he was then stable with his father and on his way in to meet the mother. We do not transfer babies in a skin-to-skin -skin position if they are intubated, not routinely at least. We do have, of course, skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact for incubated infants in the unit, both with oscillation um, ventilation and um, traditional um, ventilatory support. We, there are people intubating in a skin-to-skin -skin position. I have never tried that myself. Uh, and as I said, we have not transferred a newly delivered baby that was intubated in a skin-to-skin -skin position, yet at least. If central lines are needed, we move the infant to the incubator or the table and insert the lines and do the x-ray. After that, we can we, we try to, as soon as possible, to move the baby back to a skin-to-skin -skin position, either in a holding position, supine or a little bit to the side, in a bed nest in the arms of the parent, or in a lateral decubitus position in skin-to-skin -skin with the parent. And that is what you see on the right side here. And you can see the small catheter uh, is in place in all of these babies. Always, the position of the baby should be supported and tucked with the flexed legs, support for feet, shoulders in, arms flexed and hands together close to the mouth. This film and other small clips of films uh, were part of the IKMC study. And I will show the, you the reference and the link to the film uh, in one of the last slides. This baby girl was born in week 31 and three days, weighing 1700 grams. She was put immediately skin to skin with the mother for 20 minutes, but then the mother was bleeding heavily and the girl was then moved to the father because we always have to take safety precautions for the mother. So to ensure the safety of the mother and not to obstruct the obstetrical staff, the infant was moved to the father. The bleeding uh, slowed down and the mother could stay for yet 20 more minutes in the delivery room before she was um, rolled off to the operating room for suturing and the girl and the father was transferred to the NICU. And when we uh, secure all, as, as said in the full, small film clip, we secure all the cords and tubings uh, with masking tape um, to the father. And before leaving for the NICU, we need to switch the gases from the wall to the bottles in, on the mobile uh, equipment to be movable. And then all is set for transfer to the NICU. This is Elvin, 
20 minutes old uh, with his aunt and you saw him before. And you can notice the snow outside. So of course we are very thorough in measuring that the baby has a good temperature. This is Liv, 24 minutes old, on her way to the neonatal unit in a secure, safe place with her father. And you can have different equipment as you see. This is Stavanger, Norway, with, where they have arranged the mobile equipment with a small hospital bed um, from the children's hospital. So it's a junior hospital bed, very convenient. And when the mother, here, here we have, um, the mother who had a cesarean section. So the father has been in the NICU with her, with his daughter for uh, some hours. And now the mother has arrived um, after recovering from her cesarean section. And then the baby is moved to the mother instead in a skin to skin position. This was again from the I came see film that we used for um, educating staff. This is Benjamin again, and he is here in the uh, neonatal unit 
in a continuous skin to skin with his parents. The parents are taking turns sitting KMC or skin to skin contact with him uh, and sleeping, eating, etc. This boy, Benjamin, he did not use his bed for the first days. The metabolic screening blood test was done in skin to skin contact. Phototherapy was done in skin to skin contact. And during the first seven days uh, of life, Benjamin sp spent eight hours in total in his bed. The rest of the time was in a skin to skin, continuous skin to skin position with his parents. So this was about having the continuous skin to skin contact and then um, coping with different um, um, emergencies um, that can happen. So, um, and, and of course, to try not to, um, to separate the baby from the mother when something like this happens. And it's the same as in the, in the newborn setting that the care is the same, it's just the place that is different. So most things we can actually do in the skin to skin position. So here Benjamin, here's Benjamin again. Now he's four weeks old and he's now feeding from the breast and from the bottle and he's discharged. Feeding is not only feeding, it is the beginning of relating, as we see here. And with positive early experiences of eating, we build, the babies build global neural networks that support development and future eating skills across the time period of eating with reflexive motor patterns. Here we see twins having continuous skin to skin with their mother latching onto the breast sometimes and having these very positive early experiences of eating. Um, 
And I would like to highlight the importance of making parents feel safe, supported and calm, encouraging them to sleep and eat, uh, and eat healthy and maybe taking a walk sometime. I also think it is, it is a good idea to encourage the parents to involve their closest family members and or friends to help them in their situation. We encourage siblings to spend time in the unit. Um, could the microbiome uh, from the siblings continue uh, to um, contribute to a diversity um, of the preemies microbiome development. And the video clips you saw in the presentation uh, were, were from the training video of the IKMC study. And they were filmed at Stavanger Hos University Hospital, Karolinska University Hospital and Mowbray Maternity Hospital. It was produced for the IKMC study by Nils Bergman, Jill Bergman, uh, Björn Bestrup, Agnes Lunier and myself. And um, this is my last slide. So a special thanks to all the families and the staff in the neonatal departments at Karolinska, at, at Stavanger University Hospital and Mowbray Maternity Hospital in South Africa. Oops. Um, and all the people in the Epistos and I came see study team. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Lada Foundation, Baby Bjorn Company, and the Department of Maternal, Newborn, Child and Adolescent Health at the WHO. And here are two slides with references on this um, subject. Thank you.